Hi, um, I'm really excited to share this this video with you guys, whoever watches this. Um, <laughs> I give all praise and glory and thanks to Jesus Christ for revealing the things in this video. And I pray to God that, that you receive an impartation of revelation into the things that I'm sharing with you because these this is <laughs> this is knowledge from heaven I guarantee you you know one of the the words for revelation you know a lot of the times people don't don't know what a revelation is um, the, the only time they can think of revelation they think the book of revelation but um Actually, the, revel the, the word revelation is actually used in the Bible several times, and it means to unveil a secret to you. Um, like, um, sometimes supermarket tabloids will abuse the word and will say, shocking revelations just came out on, you know, somebody committing adultery about somebody. In other words, these secrets that were being kept a secret but were revealed to the public, okay? But in the Bible, there are revelations of the secrets of God to prophets in the Bible. Now, just because I'm saying I've had revelations, I'm not trying to put myself up on some pedestal like a prophet or something. I just believe that, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 17, every Christian that that is willing to enter in by faith to the belief that God can speak through dreams is is open to that divine communication from God and so I believe I'm open to that and um, now in regards to a word that I heard the Lord speak to me through a voice a while ago he told me to shake the dust off of my feet in regards to a lot of the prophetic ministry books in the prophetic movement and um, I'm still in the process of shaking that dust off and trying to with my conscience determine what the Lord meant by that but I've, um, I've gotten to the point now where I feel I have a pretty good understanding of what the Lord meant when he told me to shake, my, shake the dust off my feet against a lot of the prophetic ministry books and teachings and teachers in the prophetic movement. And what it is, is this. Prophetic accuracy comes through spiritual discernment of Wesleyan Arminian soteriology. I will say that again. Prophetic accuracy comes through the spiritual discernment that is acquired through studying and believing in Wesleyan Arminian soteriology. Now, uh, that's what the Lord has been showing me through dreams and through experiences in life. And so, um, you know, a lot of the times evangelical Christians and charismatic Christians like to separate while, you know, and focus on things that they should not be they, they divert over things. The evangelicals pride themselves in being preachers of the gospel. Charismatics pride themselves in being able to experience God. I say, you put the two together and you get the book of Acts. Be an evangelical charismatic. Um, so, I've been working on that in my thought, in my life, in my walk with God my thinking, my theology, and guess what's happened? God has actually blessed me in the past um, year and a half gradually building up a, a um, dreams of theology books. This is really cool. Now God's, God's, I've had dreams of theology books or devotional Christian books um, for um, since 2006 or so, but it's been increasing. <laughs> Man, it's been increasing, and um, a lot of the books are soteriological in nature. Now I know an atheist would interpret this from some sort of an atheist perspective, 
and say that, oh, well, just because I'm thinking about these things, I'm making myself dream about these things. But that's not the perspective I take about that. Um, I believe that from a biblical point of view, spirits give dreams to people. <clears throat> Whether they want dreams or not, they give them to people. The main spirits in the Bible that give dreams are demons, angels, and the Holy Spirit. The only dreams a Christian should ever pay attention to or try to want are the ones from angels and the Holy Spirit. I believe that these dreams of theology books that I've had are from angels and the Holy Spirit. There is a principle in the Bible and in Catholic spirituality that if you meditate on a subject, God will give you revelation deeper into that through a dream. Meditation leads to revelation. It's kind of like the same thing, like if you're thinking about something, you're musing on something in your heart, and you ask God a question, and you pray to God about something, in a dream He may answer your prayer with information and answer your question. This is what happened with Solomon when he, when he prayed to God and he asked a question to God. Please give, give me wisdom. I want wisdom. How? What should I do? How do I rule a country? And so Solomon fell asleep and God appeared to him in a dream and gave him wisdom and told him why. So this is what I've been doing. I've I have been really just, as a Christian, as a believer in Jesus, have been extremely disenfranchised by the watered-down sermonizing of a lot of preaching and preachers uh, ever since I've been saved. Uh, their preaching doesn't really seem to line up very much with my experience of being a Christian, except for like guys like Leonard Ravenhill and David Wilkerson that that friends have shown me. So, so I've kind of just yearned for wisdom, mentoring, and, uh, you know, God, show me the way I should go, you know. And, you know, eventually, progressively, God's been showing me that I haven't known the gospel. I haven't, I mean, I've been saved, but I, I never really understood salvation enough to, as to where I could go out and preach it. And so, you know, when I started to have a lot of struggles in regards to how do I do ministry, uh, am I going to be a missionary, am I going to be a, a pastor, a youth pastor, what? I don't know. You know, um, eventually got to the point where my wife and I were just like, hey, I think the Lord's just calling us to do an independent thing not with a denomination or anything. And so, at, in t good time, you know, as I would think about other things, like how to get a job, or what am I going to do, I would think about theology a little bit, but it was not as heavy as it was in college. And, and so, um, sooner or later, the... The desire got into me to go preaching the gospel, and um, uh, so, but honestly, it all started with a dream I had in January fourteenth of two thousand and eleven. If I'm not mistaken, oh, no. Uh, 7, 14, 11, so that's, uh, March, April, May, June, July. Okay, so on July the 14th of 2011, I started to slowly understand what God was telling me that I needed to go out and preaching the gospel. In fact, this is the entire reason why God made me, he's been drawing me out of the denominational ministry, is so that I would be freed up to be able to preach without any strings attached. Um, and so, 
because before July the 14th, 2011, I was kind of lost in my own mystical land of charismatic studies, which that's great, but that's not the gospel. I mean, I was studying about contemplative prayer a lot and visions and dreams and stuff, which is good, and I think that was definitely led by God to kind of open me up to those communications. Um, but now, in the context of this this Christian mysticism and this charismatic prophetic stuff that I've been into for so long, I've been able to be on a wavelength where, where I've been opened up to the dreams of God. And um, so in good time, I get a dream of a book. Now, I've, I've had dreams of Christian books before, but this is a different, completely different nature. This is like God's great commission to me. This is like God is, is calling me to preach the gospel for the first time. Like, there have been times where I've gone out and I've tried to preach the gospel, but it was really just my own wisdom. This is like the wisdom of God. And so I'm going to share some books with you guys. Books that I know God wants me to buy, and books that I've already bought that have come out of dreams. Dreams, or other ways that God has shown books to me. And I know John Wesley had experiences like this as well. I don't know if he actually dreamed books, but John Wesley, in his book, Plain Account of, uh, A Plain Account of Christian Perfection, says various things like, and I met with this book, and I met with this book. And it's like he's saying, like, God's sovereign providence put these books into his hands so that his, enlightened, so his mind could be enlightened to issues and revelations that God wanted him to preach about. And so, so here's the thing, okay? Charismatic Christians who reject theology, you're not going to understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> Because I'm merging my evangelical side with my charismatic side, and it's resulting in dreams about theology books. And I believe that these dreams about theology books are not from myself, that they are from God, because they're, not, they're very spontaneous in nature. They're totally out of the clear blue sky, totally not about things I was thinking about prior to that most of the time maybe in the background of my mind, but certainly not directly. So it's like God has been, every once in a while, giving me dreams and then showing me Christian theology books that God wants me to read so that I may do something useful with those the knowledge in those books later on, such as preaching the gospel with more accuracy, with more power, because I studied to show myself approved. Do you see what I'm saying? And so, I believe that that a man, an evangelist needs to study to show himself approved, a workman not ashamed of the word of God, before he even dares to go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and to make disciples of all nations. So study first, preach second. And of course, pray your whole way through it. But look, God's been showing me stuff, man. It's just cool. So I'm going to start chronologically. First, I start off with some prophetic stuff, and then I get more into gospel stuff, um, which explains maybe to some of you guys on WesleyGospel.com why I started my, my blog off called EvangelicalMystics.WordPress.com. God had me at a point where he was just leading me in the ways of contemplation and dreams and visions. But uh, around uh, July 14th, 2011, he started to shift the gears to more of an evangelistic ministry. So I'm still believing prophetic ministry. I, you know, I'll put prophetic words in my blog or whatever. Um, but now God's been through the prophetic has been putting an evangelistic prophetic anointing on me. And it's I, I receive it, man. I pray you guys receive it. The evangelistic prophetic ministry. So, um, and there's no contradiction. Don't be confused by that. There's a, there is an evangelistic prophetic ministry that I want people to tap into. Because people think they have to be separated. Oh, well, you know, some people are prophets and some people are evangelists. No. 
you know, you think of James Gall, he's a prophet, you know, he knows all about prophetic ministry, right? And then you think of Billy Graham, oh, you know, Billy Graham, he's an evangelist, but Billy Graham doesn't know anything about prophetic ministry. Take the best of Billy Graham and the best of James Gall and put them together, okay? That's what I'm talking about. A gospel-preaching prophet. Now, so in the prophetic realm of dreams and visions where God speaks directly through revelation, I have good news. God's been actually giving me theology books directly from Him and from His Spirit into my mind about what He wants me to read. This is the school of the Holy Spirit. So, you seminary guys, you know, like you Baptist guys who go to your seminaries and you don't believe in the direct influence of the Holy Spirit, you don't believe in God speaking today, and you just study your books on your own reasonings, this is ten times better. So hear me. Study the theology books that God wants you to read. You will be emblazoned with holy fires. And I hope that happens. Okay, so the first theology book that God brought to my knowledge... Now granted, I just want to say this. As a kind of an amateur theologian, people who study theology know a lot about books. They just do. It's part of their makeup. They're acquainted with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books and their titles and what they're about. And a lot of Christians might have a hard time understanding that. I mean, if you look at some of the books behind me right here, okay, I've got a couple books there that I've recently been studying about, but that's, that's not all the books I know about. <laughs> it's not, okay. Um, there's maybe, I don't know how many books I know about, I'm not saying I've read all of these books, but in theology and philosophy, you learn how to argue your case on issues. You learn how to deal with concepts and books and their titles and what certain authors believe and maintain. Okay, so I know about, like, probably, like, you know, that, that book collection there, that's probably, like, I probably know, like, 20 times maybe even 30 times the amount of books that are there as far as like the amount of books like I know about as far as like what they're about okay it doesn't mean I've read 20 times that many books that's not what the, how theology works it just means that you there's a huge catalog okay of books that are deep in my mind and that's why a lot of my my um my theology, like, that's like why a lot of my blogs have theology books listed all over them. Because my mind has just, like, hundreds of lists of just books and titles inside of my mind. Okay? And so what's the, what the amazing thing about these dreams of theology books that I've been having is that God's been taking just a couple books, boop, 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 out of my, out of my huge catalog in my head, and he's been highlighting them with his lights and with his, with his revelatory lights and his dreams. He's been highlighting them with the visions of God and dreams. It's really cool. Because it's like... Because it's like... It, when that happens, when you have a dream about a theology book and you know it's God, it's like God's taking his finger and he's putting it on this book. He says, I want you to read this. And when it's like that, it's like not having a seminary professor tell you to read it. Jesus Christ is saying, read this book. It's amazing. And so, um, you know, when I say that, certainly Jesus wants you to read the Bible. He wants you to know the Bible. But I'm talking about the ever-speaking voice of Jesus alive today to increase your understanding of the Bible. Okay, because you know what? There's a lot of heretics and false de teachers in this world. Okay, and they they love the Bible too. Okay, so who's right and who's wrong? Jesus wants you to know, and so he he I believe with all my heart has been showing me some dreams of theology books, 
which the power of God is in these doctrines. They're not just dead doctrines. These are dream revealed theology. Okay? And and God's like the power of God is on these books. Read them, study them, devour them, preach them, become them. Okay. So what I'm saying is these books and and, and, and and this is only the beginning. There's so much knowledge and wisdom with God. But um all of the books in a library at a seminary amount to nothing compared to the books I am about to share with you. Okay? And the meaning of that. Because it's straight from God, in my opinion. Alright, so here we go. The first divine dream theology book dream I had was and I'm going to tell you some of my dreams because they're really whoa <laughs> and I give all praise and th thanks to Jesus okay the first one was in January the 2nd of uh, 2011 alright January the 2nd, 2011. So let's take a look at this. I journal my dreams when I feel like it's necessary. You know, I don't journal every dream because a lot of dreams are demonic, obviously. And so you don't it's a waste of time to journal those ones. But whenever I feel like, you know, I have an undeniably God-related dream, I write it down. I have the energy to write it down. And, uh... Okay. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, January the 2nd, 2011. This is amazing. Okay. Dream of John Lacey's book. I dreamed that the Apostle Paul... I saw Apostle Paul in this dream. I dreamed that the Apostle Paul had endorsed... John Lacey's The General Delusion of Christians Touching the Ways of God's Revealing Himself to and by the Prophets. That's a book. That's a book. The heavy anointing and glory of God was upon this book. I saw Paul flying like Superman above the clouds with Lacey's book in hand. He was trying to write the copyright or the publisher into the book. Since I was up there flying with him, I said, I think it was written in 1717. Then he handed me the book, and I flew like Superman down over the surface of the ocean. Floating about 40 feet over the ocean, I saw a mound of water forming out of the sea. The life of God was in the water. It was like looking at a hill or a small mountain, but made purely of the water of the ocean. And I said, by sudden inspiration, and over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Genesis 1-2 The foundations of the world God has been speaking to people through dreams and visions and angels and goosebumps. Woo! All right. So the dream, the book that was revealed in that dream was uh, by John Lacy, L-A-C-Y, and the book is called The General Delusion of Christians. This book was written um, by a one of the French prophets from the Savines. And um, um, they were a charismatic group of Calvinists that uh, eh, they got a little militaristic and uh, <laughs> kind of like Jim Jones thing going on there. But uh, they didn't have heretical views like him. But they um, they they fought against the government and they died. So that's really sad. But uh, other than that, John Wesley read the book. He said it was an odd book, but it was still a good one. And so he liked it. Okay, now, uh, 
on the 15th, January the 15th, 11, 2011, I had another dream. And here it is. I dream, and this is the beginning of my dreams about Leonard Ravenhill. Great man of God, I've always had respect for since about 2004. And now I start having dreams about Leonard Ravenhill. This is really cool. Okay. January the 15th, 2011. Dream of Leonard Ravenhill's corpse. <laughs> Whoa. No, this was not a necromancy or spiritism dream. Again, God used the person of Leonard Ravenhill to communicate something. I had already had a Leonard Ravenhill dream before this but it wasn't a book dream so I'm not going to share it this time I was at a Catholic church with my family it might have been the one in Kentucky when we lived in Kentucky I saw a plaque on the outside of the building that said the body of Leonard Ravenhill was inside I went in and I saw his body laid down on his back his hands piously folded like a Catholic saint there was no tomb encasement around him, but he was postured in the style of a Catholic saint. His body had no decay, it was incorrupt. Wolfgang Simpson's The House Church book was placed at his feet, as if Ravenhill had endorsed the book. The, the last dream I had of Ravenhill, he was expressing grief about the institutional church. This time, Ravenhill was used as a sign and symbol of approval for house church. My, bro my brother was looking at Ravenhill's body. Matt, I said, this is Leonard Ravenhill. He wrote, he wrote Why Revival Tarries. He was one of the foremost authorities on revival. I also then remembered he wrote Revival Praying, and I said, this guy spoke about prayer a lot. He seemed to pray all the time. Then I pointed at his knees and saw that they were covered with black pants. I wonder what his knees looked like since he spent so much time praying on them, I said. Then I thought about how the Apostle James was called camel knees in church history. At one point, Ravenhill's appearance transformed into my long-haired guy friend who was like a hippie Jesus freak, but then he resumed his old form. I know that Ravenhill's body is really buried in a cemetery in Texas nearby Keith Green's grave, but this dream was not about where Ra Ravenhill is really buried. It was to communicate several things. 1. Ravenhill symbolizes the revival of church. 2. Ravenhill is a saint in the eyes of God. 3. From heaven's viewpoint, Ravenhill approves of house churches. 4. Revival prayer plus house church equals revival. And 5. Jesus freaks tend to be open to revival. So the books that were revealed to me in that dream alone were the book Why Revival Tarries and the book Revival Praying by Leonard Ravenhill and the book The House Church Book by Wolfgang Simpson. Okay, so after I had this dream, guess what? Andrew Strom sends out a um he's a prophet in New Zealand I have a lot of respect for. Andrew Strom has a lot of, uh, sends out a um, a mailing list that the biography of Leonard Ravenhill has just been hot off the press released. <laughs> That's the next day after this dream, okay? And it is called In Light of Eternity by Mac Tomlinson, The Life of Rent Leonard Ravenhill. So, Mac Tomlinson's In Light of Eternity, The Life of Leonard Ravenhill. Okay, so that was also revealed as a result of this dream. So six months pass, I don't have any dreams of theology books at all, for, for six months, and then I get a doozy. And this one is, happens on 
July the 14th. This is like God's great commission to me. Okay. It's a short but very meaningful dream. Okay. I'm going to find it in here. Here it is. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July. July. Okay, so this happened on July the 14th, 2011. Dream of Steve Harper's The Way to Heaven. Now check this out. I have this book with me. Oh, no, I don't. My wife is reading it right now. Okay. It's the book the book is called Steve Harper's The Way to Heaven, The Gospel According to John Wesley. I dreamed that Rebecca and I were staying at a, um, a United Methodist uh, summer camp. Now, I wrote the actual camp in here, but I'm not going to say it because I don't want to get into legal problems. But it was a summer camp of the United Methodist Church, and I had my NIV study Bible with me, and I had Steve Harper's The Way to Heaven with me. As I came out of my car in the dream at night, I saw the camp director and someone else looking out of the office window at me. Although he was eventually fired for misusing the camp's money for himself, the dream meant that that kind of spirit still remains in the United Methodist Church, which is desperately in need of the gospel according to John Wesley. And so after that dream, I was like, whoa! I've had dreams of Christian books before, but this was a doozy. This was like, this is like specific John. Not only do I want you to preach the gospel, here's how you can do it. And John Wesley's the guy that Leonard Ravenhill always talked about, remember? I was like, yes, I thought about that. Yeah, and he's also the first and foremost street preacher ever. I was like, yeah, you're right. So that understanding came into me. I was like, I've always wanted to do street preaching. Always. I always thought it was biblical, book of Acts, and even in the Gospels. Street preaching is biblical. I've always been frustrated with the, the, the lazy, watered-down friendship evangelism and, and just the one-on-ones and all this stuff. It's not biblical and very much. And so I, I, I've always wanted to... Not when I got this book, I was like, whoa, here's the message. The message to be preaching when you go out there. The Gospel according to John Wesley. So Steve Harper's The Way to Heaven. Shortly after that, I changed the name of my website to wesleygospel.com. So... So the books from here on out that I dream about are going to be more salvation related and more along the lines of soteriology and salvation. But not all of them. Okay. So then we come to November the 28th, 2011. Oh, okay. I didn't I didn't write the dream out, but I dreamed that I was reading oh I'm sorry. It was in November the twenty sixth, twenty eleven. Yeah. I dreamed that I was reading the book called Smith Wigglesworth on Spiritual Gifts. All right. God seems to think that there's some good stuff in that book on spiritual gifts, so I'm not going to argue. Then we come to um, and you, I know that was God because I'm not a very big fan of Smith Wigglesworth. <laughs> I'm not. You know, I've heard the stories of him punching people in order to get him healed, and, you know, but I dreamed it. And it was totally, you know, you know, spontaneous, so. Okay. 
Um, November the 28th, no, I'm sorry, I already did that. March the 21st, 2012. Now, I've been having an outpouring in the last four four months or so. Actually, in the last two months, I've been having a lot of dreams about the gospel and stuff. It's been really cool the past two months. Let's see here. March the 21st, 2012. Yeah, this is a neat, neat one. Dream of a yellow book. Now, yellow symbolizes gift, as in spiritual gift. Dream of a yellow book by John Wesley on spiritual discernment of prophetic gifts versus psychic abilities. Whoa. If that doesn't explain the whole dream right there, I don't know what does. I dreamed that I was holding a slim yellow book, about 200 pages, by John Wesley. It was titled something like, Psychic Abilities Distinguished from Spiritual Gifts. I knew in my heart that I was holding the key to spiritual discernment in the realm of the prophetic. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Andrew Strom, hear my message. Um, let's see here. John Wesley was a great gospel preacher. His in-depth sermons on justification, regeneration, and sanctification are more than enough to provide spiritual discernment for charismatic Christians. And um, I had two books and or articles written in my mind's memory as I was writing out this dream. And I wrote, See Robert Tuttle's Mysticism in the Wesleyan Tradition. And I also wrote, See John Wesley's Human Life a Dream. Cool. Praise God. So in that one, God was showing me, Hey, do you want to have better discernment of your dreams and visions in the prophetic realms? Then become a Wesleyan. I don't, by that I do not mean join the Wesleyan church. I mean read John Wesley's stuff. Read the works of John Wesley. Okay, March the 22nd. March the 22nd, 2012. I have Dream of Paul Washer's School of Biblical Evangelism. I dreamed that a lot of the Neo-Puritan preachers from the I'll Be Honest revival, like Tim Conway and those guys, were attending a conference with Paul Washer. Taking from Ray Comfort's phrase, they called the conference School of Biblical Evangelism. I saw the banner. Paul Washer was preaching the gospel with righteous anger in the light blue shirt he was wearing at the shocking youth message in 2002. It was like God was showing me that in the spirit, that sermon sparked the beginning of what is now the I'll Be Honest revival. At one point, I saw a bunch of the preachers take a group picture together. Charles Leiter, author of Justification and Regeneration, Bob Jennings, Tim Conway, Mac Tomlinson, author of In Light of Eternity, The Life of Leonard Ravenhill, there's that book again, and Paul Washer. All of them are featured by grantedministries.org. At the conference, even Charles Stanley seemed to come under their influence. And guess what I found out recently, totally way after this dream. Charles Stanley wrote the foreword to In Light of Eternity, The Life of Leonard Ravenel. 
At the conference, even Charles Stanley seemed to come under their influence, but at first I doubted when I saw him passionately flinging his arms to show how to express revival preaching. Was Stanley the real deal? And after seeing that forward recently, I'm like, yeah, so even Charles Stanley, he has a huge influence in the Southern Baptist Convention. He's been the president of the Southern Baptist Convention like twice. And I believe he's the pastor of First Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, I think. Okay. Huge revelation. That's a huge gospel evangelistic revelation. Hear me. Okay, here's a recent one. Oh, yeah. Okay, so at one point in the month of March, I started getting this new job where I was working at this new job. And um, in the midst of this transition, I was reading this book right here. You know, I had already read Steve Harper's The Way to Heaven, and now I had advanced to second grade, and I started reading John Wesley's Scriptural Christianity. Okay? And this goes more in depth into about, you know, what John Wesley taught in his sermons and stuff. It's a good book. Um, and in this, he um, the, he's very scholarly, and he refers to a whole lot of other authors and books about... Um, Ooh, man, the power of God is all over me right now. Whew. Read this book. Thomas Oden's John Wesley's Scriptural Christianity. Anyway, I was reading this, and, um, and um, I would eventually see authors referred to of books... And, you know, I'd be like, hey, I think I should read that book. Go a little bit deeper down this rabbit trail and this rabbit trail. This is a soteriology book more than anything. Okay, it's great to get ready for go out and do some evangelism and go preaching the gospel. Okay, so one of the book, one of the authors and or books that I started to see over and over and over being referenced in this book is a guy named Kenneth Collins. He is a Wesleyan scholar in the, I believe in the United Methodist Church, but he's not like the liberals. He's he's conservative, and he's just like these guys. Conservative, old-school Methodist type thinking. So guess what? I don't have a dream this time. I go to my new job, and as a security officer, I have to use a, a, a device on my computer in which I see the names and pictures of everyone that badges in and swipes in to come in the building. Well, guess what? One of the employees there, his name is Kenneth Collins. The exact same name, the exact same spelling of the author of the books that this guy is referring to in this book. I'm like, whoa. At one point, I got so freaked out, I, I thought it was the same guy, <laughs> but it wasn't. <laughs> okay, um, so the God just kept on saying, over and over, you need to read Kenneth Collins after this. And so, Kenneth Collins has written three good books on, on salvation, on John Wesley's view of salvation and gospel, and it is, goes like this. Wesley on Salvation by Kenneth Collins. Then he goes, The Scripture Way of Salvation by Kenneth Collins. And then finally, The Theology of John Wesley by Kenneth Collins. These three books on the Gospel are heavily anointed. I haven't read them yet, but I know that God's Holy Spirit is revealing them to me, and He wants me to be preaching what is in those books. He wants me to be going out in the public and preaching that. Alright. God revealed that to me last month. Alright. Now, take you in to a really cool dream I recently had. And this month, 
is April, April the 13th, 2012. I dreamed that I was in a mansion that was being renovated. And guess who was in it? It was Leonard Ravenhill. This is the clearest dream of Leonard Ravenhill I believe I've ever had. Because I actually saw him, he was in the light, and I was talking with him face to face. Okay, this is really cool. Um, I believe he could be either an angel representing Leonard Ravenhill, or it could actually be a... I'm speaking to him in the spirit world. I don't know. I will say this, though. When I dreamed this, I really believed I was talking to Leonard Ravenhill. So, interpret that how you like. Um, so, I'm in this room, and I've got a copy of Why Revival Terry's by Leonard Ravenhill, but it's not in the normal covering. It's in a special, kind of like a classic edition covering, and it's like white, and it's got like classic, you know, something something anniversary edition. It's like really pretty and and stuff, and um, I'm holding this, and, I, and he's right over in front of me, and I was like, well, I've already read this book, and I told him, and I've read w Revival Praying, should I read some of your other ones? Because I haven't read the others. And he said, yes, please, read all of the books I've written. And um, so when he said that, the first books that came to my mind were Revival God's Way by Leonard Ravenhill and uh, Sodom Had No Bible by Leonard Ravenhill. But I know that's not all the other ones. In fact, he's written some others. I'm going to read them to you just a sec. As he told me in the dream, read them all. So, okay. He also wrote a book called Tried and Transfigured. No, wrote another one called Meat for Men. Wrote another one called America is Too Young to Die. And that's it. So read them all. But that wasn't it. So then we took a, a walk through this mansion that was being... Um, you know, uh, it was being renovated, had plastic all over the furniture and everything. And so we were walking through, trying to find our path through this place. And I was talking to him about Charles Finney. And I said, uh, you know, I know that uh, modernized works of Charles Finney have been written. What do you think about those works? Like, I know Reverend Parkhurst has written some modernized editions of Charles Finney like Principles of Obedience, Principles of Victory what do you think about that? and he said well you can't read them in the original text? he was pretty down on that and so he was like no it's all modernized he was like, he was like no and, and he, said, he was like John read all of Charles Finney's books read them all the original texts read all the original Charles Finney's books so he was like, really, like, read them all, the originals. And so, when I got up from that dream, I was of the, um, the knowledge that um, God wanted me to read uh, specifically all of this one. Now, I've only read selections of this, I admit. wanted me to read all of this one here. Lectures on Revivals of Religion by Charles Finney. This is produced by Alethea and Hart. This is the original book by Charles Finney without any modern um, abridgments. But then this, this same publisher, Alethea and Hart, it's also edited by Richard Friedrich. Um, he puts out another one called Lectures on Systematic Theology, Volumes 1 and 2. There's another one called Lectures on, or Skeletons of Theology or something. So he's got some all the originals, but he doesn't have all of Charles Finney's books. All but, but the ones that they put out here, they're originals. They're not edited at all. Um, in, or in other words, they're not modernized. And so Ravenhill's like, read all of the original Finney books. 
And then after I, I woke up from that dream, another book that was really strong in my mind was a scholarly book called Charles G. Finney and the Spirit of American Evangelicalism. In that book, the preface catalogs all of the original titles of Charles Finney's books and the original texts. So I feel like that's what Raymond Hill is saying. He's like pointing me to that book. The book is called Charles G. Finney and the Spirit of American Evangelicalism. All right. Got through that one. That was the school of the Holy Spirit, brother. Okay. You want Holy Spirit Seminary? Yeah. That's enough to keep you occupied for a lifetime. Okay. I had another one very recently. See, that's why I'm making this video, because I'm just getting a flood. A flood of this. <laughs> and maybe God's going to give me more books, you know, common. And I'm going to have to make another video like this. Who knows? I don't want to forget these books. In fact, you know, I might only get like two or three views of this video. I might just be making this video for myself to remind myself. I don't know. Okay. But recently, April the 26th, I had another one. Okay. I dream of J.I. Packer's concise theology. I dreamed I was at the house of an on-fire-for-God young man. Among his theology books, which he had several copies of, was J.I. Packer's concise theology. Background. Last night I was on the Wikipedia article called Antinomianism, and it referred to this book explaining against antinomianism. So, I'm now I know that was the Lord because I'm not generally a J.I. Packer fan. <laughs> Again, just like I'm not a Smith Wigglesworth fan, yet I still receive this dream. It's just like God to do that. You know, kind of kind of stretch your theological boundaries a little bit. Okay. So that's what the Lord now, why did I say why I'm not a J.R. Packer fan? Because he's a Calvinist. I'm more of an Arminian type of a guy. But that doesn't mean God can't speak through some Calvinists. Okay. Alrighty. My last dream was really weird, but still relevant. And just to give you some background on this one. Last night or so, last night I was um, doing some studying... So I'll tell you what, studying theology can lead to dreams of theology. And that's a lot of revelation, man. Because when God sanctions and endorses a book, there's a lot of information that God is speaking through books. And I've gotten some of these books, and sparkles of angels will appear on the page as I'm reading the books. I'm not kidding. The power of God is on some theology books. Don't you doubt it for a minute. Okay. Now, in this in this time, the other the other night I was editing an article I wrote called Woe to the Clergymen and Bible Teachers. And in this article, I was um I wrote a little subsection called Jesus is okay we're not okay Christian critiques of Thomas Harris and so um, I was studying the pop psychology uh, book I'm okay you're okay where people you know just non-judgmental love hippie acceptance you know reject the truth of God I came across a Christian critique of that in David Smith's Handbook of Contemporary Theology, page 38, and it says this, Most neo-Orthodox theologians hold such a broad view of the atonement that they border on universalism in their doctrine of salvation. Their idea of love is a kind of I'm okay, you're okay view, which rejects any disciplinary aspect at all. Okay, so guess what happened the next night? I dreamed that I spoke with Karl Barth. <laughs> That's 
really that was whoa out there man because I don't care about Karl Bart at all okay I don't think about Karl Bart I don't really know his theology very much I just know who the guy is he was a quasi liberal um and and uh was considered to be the greatest theologian in the 20th century. Um, so I spoke to this guy. Now I spoke to or at least to a representation of him. Okay. And he was joking the entire time. Just joking, joking, joking. Not serious at all. And uh, eventually, you know, the, the phrase came up, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. That's all the theology he knows. You know? And so, um, came out of that. Guess what? I forgot about the dream for most of the day, but I looked it up because I remembered it again. And I looked it up, and guess what? I go to the Karl Barth article in Wikipedia, and these are the things the shocking revelations I get on Karl Barth. Critics have referred to Barth as the father of neo-orthodoxy. Isn't that interesting in light of what I read just before? The I'm okay, you're okay theology? The non-judgmental love? Guess what? I went and read this about him. Relationship with Charlotte von Kirschbaum. When Bart first met Charlotte von Kirschbaum in 1924, he had already been married for 12 years to his wife, Nellie, with whom he had also had five children. And he goes on to say that because he was a scholar, this young woman lived in the house with him and his wife and his children for many, many years. And he developed a relationship with this woman and became distanced from his wife. So he's a wicked man. He's a wicked man. So God was showing me that Karl Barth was wicked. And this non judgmental love, I'm okay, you're okay, is not okay. <laughs> okay? And so don't listen to Karl Barth, who's wicked. Wicked man. Don't listen. I don't care how much you think he knows about anything. Uh, people's knowledge of religion is worthless if they are wicked. Okay. In that dream, though, I also had more books that were good books. In the dream, I dreamed of this one. This was last night. I dreamed this one. And it was all wrinkled up and used. I had used it. John Wesley's Scriptural Christianity by Thomas Oden. I dreamed that. Guess what I also had dreamed about? I dreamed about the modernized version of Charles Finney uh, called, um, it, uh, it was also used and worn out, it was called Finney's Systematic Theology by Bethany House Publishers. So um, that doesn't con necessarily contradict the dream I had by Leonard Ravenhill where he was telling me to read all of Finney's original works. but. Um, it kind of supplements it. I feel in my spirit that it's like, yeah, read that in addition to the original works of, of, of Finney. So he was. It, so I feel like the dreams of God are saying, read all of these books, but also read this one a lot to the point where it's all wrinkly, and read Finney's Systematic Theology put out by Bethany House Publishers again to the point where it's all wrinkly, and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in the open air. Thank you very much.